up YouTube, it's Lissa and welcome back to my channel. Or if this is the first time you are seeing my face, welcome to my channel. Now, before I get into today's video, if you could like this video, comment on this video and subscribe to my channel, that would be greatly appreciated because let's be clear, we have fun over here. Now, before I get started, I said that already, but before I get started, you all should really comment on my videos because I don't bite. I'm not a mean person. I welcome all comments. You can let me know how I'm doing. Let me know what I need to do, how I can improve. We all could use some help. So just leave me some comments so we can stay connected because that's how we, you know, that's how we going to stay connected. If you leave me comments, that's how we stay connected. So just leave them down below. Leave them down below be love mm -mm. all right now in today's video i'm going to be talking more about my abusive relationship because out of the videos that i had posted on my channel this that video about my the first video i put about my abusive relationship is the most viewed out of all the videos on my channel so granted i just started youtube like a month ago and i only have like close to 50 subscribers but that is the most viewed video so why not make another one and i'm honestly not even doing this just for views i'm doing this because i want to help someone else like it's not for views it's really not for views i want to help someone else because i know there are people out there struggling there are people out there who are in abusive relationships and can't get out or there are people who have been in an abusive relationship and don't know how to pick their life up afterwards so that's what these videos are for and that's what i want my channel to be about i want to help someone i don't really care about getting clout or being famous from all of this like i mean it would be nice but at the end of the day like this is to help me and to help someone else like all that other stuff that's extra and i really don't care about it I just want to help someone and I want to be able to know that I did help somebody. So before someone starts coming for me about views and all the other stuff and about me like trying to exploit myself, I'm not trying to exploit anything. This is real life. This is how, this is what happened to me. And I just want to share it with someone else because I know it could possibly help somebody else. I have always asked myself the question, why did I stay in that relationship? Now, I think I stayed for one main reason, and that was because I didn't think that I was good enough. Now, I think that because when I was younger, I was bullied a lot. I was bullied a lot for how I talked, how I looked. Just, I was bullied for, I was bullied for everything. And yes, kids can be, kids can be cruel, I understand that, but when you are bullied as a child, that follows you to when you go to high school and all that stuff, because the way your peers view you, you don't want to be viewed as like, you don't want to be viewed as a target by people. Like that's not what you want to be viewed as. So it's just like, if you've had to deal with that when you were little, like that's pop, that's what you expect from everybody. So when I was in middle school, when I was in elementary school, I was bullied throughout that entire time. So I just didn't think I was good enough. And no matter what anybody told me, I'm sorry, I'm trying not to cry because I feel it, I feel it coming in. But what, no matter what anybody told me, I, I always had in the back of my mind, oh, you're fat, oh, you're ugly, oh, you're this, you're that. So that's, that's probably the main reason why I stayed because I didn't think there was anything better. I didn't know there was anything better and I didn't want to try and find anything better because what I had at the moment I was, I was, what I had at the moment was serving its purpose. So, or I thought it was serving its purpose. So when I met him, I was over 200 pounds and I was struggling with self-confidence. So I think that's what attracted, that's what attracted him to me because I didn't really have, I didn't have any self-confidence. I wasn't confident in myself at all. So him being a sociopath and him just honing into that, I was an easy target for everything that was brought to me. So 
and when you're on the outside looking in you can easily see these things you can easily line them up and point them out to somebody but when you're on the inside and when you're on the inside of it it's so hard to point those things out because you don't you really don't know what to pinpoint and living in it is way different than looking at it from the outside so when people always black people but my family will always say well you can just leave you can do this you can do that and yes of course I could have but at that time I thought that I would have been miserable without him I thought that I would have been lonely without him, not knowing that without him, I would have been, I would have been perfectly fine. And I can't even say that I was in the, I was in the abusive relationship because I didn't have the love of my father because my father loved me. Like my father loved me and my father never put his hands on me. My father didn't even like spanking me. So I, I can't say it was because of that. It was just me and me thinking that I wasn't going to ever be good enough for somebody. That I, That's what all I was good for. That's basically what it is. That's what I felt. And by the time I ended up out of that relationship, I was 175 pounds. When I went in, I was over 200 and I was healthy. When I got out, I was 175 and malnourished because I wasn't eating. I wasn't taking care of my body correctly. And I was, my ass was getting beat pretty much every day. I've been through a lot in that relationship. I've had to run through woods. <laughs> I had to run through woods one time to get away from him. No, matter of fact, I had to run through woods twice to get away from him. I had to run through woods. He broke like the, you know, like the deadbolt lock that you have. It's not a deadbolt, but that little, like the little latch thing that you put on your door. He broke that one time, busted in my apartment. Broke my window in my room. Broke my phone. All of it, I thought it was my fault. Because that's what I was being told. And when you're in that, when you're in an abusive relationship, it's hard to differentiate between fact and fiction. Because the facts are that you are with somebody that you think loves you. You're with somebody that you think that you could possibly change. And you're with and you're with someone that's literally whooping your ass every day. And the fiction of that is that all of that is your fault. That you're getting your ass beat because it's your fault that I'm beating your ass. Like, everything was my fault. So when I say it's hard to differentiate between fact and fiction, it's hard to know which way is up and which way is down because everything is all discombobulated. And it doesn't make any sense. And so when you try to rationalize it, you can't rationalize anything because none of it makes sense. And so you start to think, well, maybe it is my fault. And you start to go over all the things that happen to lead up to the point where you are getting your ass whooped, but you don't really realize that it's not you, it's the other person. And you don't realize that until it's too late. So, with that being said, none of that was my fault. I did not deserve to get my ass whooped on was every day. I did not deserve to have to run through woods twice. I did not deserve to have to have those things done to me. I did not deserve to get ashes thrown on me. I did not deserve I didn't deserve any of it. So, 
now I can differentiate between fact and fiction. The fiction of that relationship was that I was with someone who loved me because it's fiction because he didn't love me. I was with him, yes, but he didn't love me. I was just, I was just another body. I was not even another body. I was just another mind that he can control because I was easy to control. And that's hard and messed up to say about myself, but I knew, I know now that I wasn't strong enough. And had I been strong enough, I would have never been in that position. So, and I'm not blaming, I'm not blaming myself for putting myself into the position. I'm blaming myself because I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it for what it was. And I couldn't see it for what it was because my mind was clouded from all of the bullying that I got when I, I, that I got when I was younger. And now I'm starting to realize that a lot of the things that have happened to me or the way I think about myself is not just because of the abusive relationship. It's because of what I went through when I was younger. And it's not fair. It's really not fair that that I had to go through it, but I'm glad that I went through it because it made me a stronger person and it made me realize that, <clears throat> it made me realize that I am good enough to get what I deserve and I will get what I deserve. And it just taken me up until this point to really realize that. And for me to understand that I didn't do anything wrong. So throughout that entire abusive relationship, I thought that every step that I was taking was wrong. And I didn't know what right step to take because everything that I did was wrong. And nothing I did was right. So, yeah. So basically, that's just what it is. And, but yeah. I just want to, I just, I just really, want, I just really want to help someone. Like, I hope that this helps them. I really hope that this helps someone because it's not easy. It's really not easy. And it's not easy. Like, I, I still struggle. I still struggle with a lot. And... I'm taking it day by day because I'm just taking it day by day. <laughs>